So today I'm gonna to show you how I made a dual pressure pot and vacuum chamber out of PVC uh, on a budget, and it really, really works well. So as part of the knife making process, obviously you have to use scales, different materials for the handles. Um, I've only used natural wood to this point, not stabilized wood, not resins, uh, and I wanted to mix that up a little bit. These materials can be pretty pricey if you buy them. Um, stabilized wood and resin scales uh, blocks are pretty pricey. Um, and I'm gonna be making quite a lot and I really just wanted to be able to dabble in it and work out if it's something that I could do myself. Now to do that, you need a pressure pot and a vacuum chamber vacuum chamber to stabilize wood, pressure pot to cast resin so that there's no bubbles in the resin. Now I don't have a lot of room in my workshop, um, so I wanted one system that was pressure and vacuum in the same thing. Um, so I did a lot of research uh, on YouTube and there was nothing that I could find. So what I decided to do was combine a couple of the techniques I saw. So I'm going to show you that now. Um, it's just using PVC pipe, uh, some perspex and some connectors, and I'll show you what I've got. So apart from the pumps, there's a vacuum pump and a pressure pump, this is the extent of the setup. So we have a PVC pipe with an end cap that is glued on, uh, and then a threaded end on this end. Uh, I've got another smaller PVC pipe, which fits inside the bigger one. That's for stabilizing. Uh, that's just got an end cap. Um, that's where you put your cactus juice. And then I've got these two lids. Uh, I've got a pressure lid and a vacuum lid. Uh, now we'll just have a look at exactly how I put those together. Quick side note, I didn't film the process of putting these together because I didn't know if it was going to work and it actually took me a long time because I was sourcing little bits, I was trying things out. So you won't see me putting it together but I'm going to take you through step by step exactly how it happened, um, which should be just as good as the real thing. Okay, so this is the pressure pot lid. So basically all it is, is a PVC end cap um, threaded end cap with a rubber gasket. I'm using a 100mm PVC, so just get a lid that suits that. Then it is one of these tyre uh, valves, and these are, it was six bucks for a pair. So it's basically just a high pressure tyre valve, drill a hole in the lid that suits this little bit in here, and then you push the valve up through and it really just sits, it just uh, sits there. This little lip here stops the valve from pulling out. Um, this large lip here stops the valve from being pushed in. And because it's high pressure, this can easily take the um, 50 PSI or so that we're gonna be using. And then just some basic uh, Teflon tape around the thread for the pressure gauge. So basically the pressure gauge is just a standard pressure gauge that uh, you can buy from Harbour Freight, Bunnings, wherever you are. Just your standard hardware warehouse. Um, now, I haven't turned this over yet because it's got a little bit of a funny thing going on in here. So what I did, um, I found that it was leaking just a little bit. I don't think I need this now. I think the leaking was something different. But what I did was I found a bowl in the house that had a diameter of 100 mil. Uh, and then I molded just some standard silicon caulking into it because my theory was as the pressure builds up, this thing's going to push outwards and is going to essentially seal around the tube that's placed over there. Um, it did actually feel like it helped, but I think I've sorted out the initial problem anyway. So that's kind of like a, uh, an extra layer of uh, safety, if you will. But you can see in here the, um, the valve that's been pushed into there, and then the pressure gauge coming out the bottom there. So the pressure gauge, uh, I did, uh, I tapped the thread to go into there. Uh, never when you're putting these things in, never tighten using this top bit. Always tighten using a um, spanner on the, on the metal bit down the bottom there. Otherwise you can break this thing off. And then you basically just use a pump. Um, this is a pump I've borrowed off my folks. Uh, you could equally use a high pressure tire pump uh, bike tire pump, just one of those ones that you push up and down. Um, but obviously this is a lot easier. This then 
gets threaded onto there. I'll now show you how I assemble it. Okay, so what we've got, basically, I put the tube in the vise and I've glued on these other bits of PVC from a different pipe uh, so that when, because I've really got to crank the lid onto this thing really tightly so that it's almost entirely airtight, but obviously it's a cylinder so it rotates. So what I've done is I've created a place for the um, vise to latch on to these things. Now when you're doing this, you really don't want to crank it up too much because otherwise you get the PVC deforming. So I just slightly do it and then I've got this bit uh, latching on to the underneath there and that bit latching on there. So now that's as solid as a rock. I can crank the lid onto this as tight as I want. Um, so I'll just quickly show you that. Okay, so basically I will have cast my resin in here. Now I'll probably make a caddy so that uh, it can sit perfectly flat all the time, but as it is, I just slide that in, make sure that it is flat um, and it's not tilted either way. Put that in here. Um, it is now essentially ready to go. I get the cap on, I make sure my uh, DIY seal is nice and snug in there. Uh, I put the Teflon tape on first, and then it's just a matter of cranking this thing on by hand. Start cranking this on. And because it's got the rubber gasket at the top uh, inside, you just crank it as hard as you can go. I really do push this thing a lot. Um, and it's ready. If for any reason the pressure gauge is facing the wrong way, I pick this thing up, spin it around in the vise uh, so the pressure gauge is facing out. It's no big deal. So, as I said, I just connect the pump to the tire pressure valve. Now, because pressure kind of freaks me out, I get my headphones and my glasses on every time. If this thing pops, it's gonna pop so, uh, out the ends, so it really shouldn't be a problem, but I kinda like to have the uh, safety gear on anyway. And then we turn that on. And you can see that go up. Uh, and it really does hold a very good pressure. Now, I always like to just stop it at about 20, 25 usually, just listen, make sure there's nothing else going on, and then get it going again. Now I usually go just a little bit over 50. I've kind of decided that 50 is where I like to have things. Um, and as I'm releasing this, it loses a tiny bit of pressure. So I'll get that released. That was a bit more than usual, I just uh, slipped off there. But you can see it sits at about 50, usually. So this PVC is rated for, I think it's 180 PSI. Um, and that's, uh, I think that's maximum load. So 50 PSI, we're miles away from its maximum load. Uh, obviously there's joints and things like that. Um, I think this thing would probably crack before it, there was any uh, dangerous, you know, exploding going on. I think there'll be some cracks that would then compromise it, but it wouldn't be dangerous. Um, but I do always wear, I'm still wearing them, uh, glasses and uh, ear protectors because, you know, pressure can be dangerous. And I've had this thing running 24 hours uh, and it certainly does lose pressure. It isn't entirely airtight, but um, I'm losing maybe from 50 PSI, it'll get down to maybe 35 psi overnight uh, over about 12 hours so that's pretty good if I if I cast my resin in the day uh, I can just come in and just be topping the extra 5 psi up um, and if it's a long set uh, then I do that during the day most of the time the hardening time is spent in that period and then overnight when it's just very slowly losing a little bit, bit of pressure it's just doing the final bit of hardening so it's really not a problem so this works fantastically. Now I'll just quickly show you the uh, vacuum chamber and how that works. Now what I've got here is some Perspex. This is a 10mm Perspex. 
because of the area um, is so small, you don't need a really, really fat perspex. If the area that you are trying to uh, seal is very large, then obviously there's a lot of downward pressure on this. But because of the small surface area that's getting um, the force has been put on, this 10 mil is absolutely ample. So what I've got is basically a male to female elbow joint. I've then got a male male connector and then a ball valve. And basically that is all you need. Uh, and then a vacuum pressure gauge. Um, obviously the vacuum pressure gauge starts on the right and swings to the left as the pressure is removed, whereas the pressure pressure gauge starts on the left, swings to the right as pressure is in increased. I got an oil filled one. Um, I heard they were a bit better and an, it didn't cost any more. Um, and then I just had some foam lying about from another project and I cut that into circle and then I cut a um, this ridge into it so that the PVC pipe sits into there. I have no idea if that was necessary but uh, this thing holds an extremely good vacuum. So then the one thing I did actually have to spend some money on was the pump. Um, I did everything I could to try and work out how not to have to buy a pump but uh, nevertheless had to. So this thing, uh, this is a $130 pump from a, a pretty generic Chinese made, um, but it seems to do an extremely good job. Uh, it has a very strange connector on here. So this is the inlet valve, um, very strange looking connector. Well, not strange looking, but the thread size is weird. It's not a quarter inch, it's not an eighth, it's somewhere in between. Uh, it's kind of a 12 mil, but it just doesn't really fit with anything on the shelf. So what I've done is essentially got a bit of hose, push that down onto here, use a hose clamp, clamp that down. Um, and it's amazing. It really does a very good job. And then on the other end, I just have uh, whatever this thing is called. I'm not sure what that's called. Uh, and then I screw this into here. Um, I will put that together and show you how it works. Okay, so basically what I've got is I've got this uh, insert and this is where I pour my cactus juice. Um, I then put the wood inside and then I've got this sink which basically is a piece of steel that I've drilled some holes into, put a little handle on. Uh, I put that into here and that pushes all the wood down so it's not floating anymore. Uh, and the cactus juice level is above the level of the sink. Um, so that's pretty effective. And then I get the insert, I place it in. I've got it right at the top, so I don't need a handle on it. Place the lid on, make sure it's snug. Turn the vacuum on, open the ball valve, and you can see it go up. And this really is a really good system. It seems to hold the pressure really nicely. So you can see it goes up to basically the maximum for this pressure gauge. I'll just turn that off. I close the ball valve so that there's nothing else in this system that's interfering with the vacuum here. When you're actually stabilizing wood, um, you need the, the pump going the whole time. Um, so even if this system isn't vacuum tight, uh, in this sense, when everything's turned off, if it's just leaking now, it doesn't matter so much because the vacuum needs to be on the whole time that you're uh, extracting the air from the wood. Um, so even if this sat up at uh, minus 30 while the pump was on, you turn it off and that drops down, it really doesn't matter. Because as soon as the vacuum's finished its job after 8 or 12 hours, uh, when you turn it off, you have to let the air out anyway so that the um, resin, the cactus juice, can then go into the wood. If you've just got the vacuum on it the whole time, 
none of the cactus juice wants to go into the wood so much. Um, so basically what we've got now, ideally you would have a two way, you'd have a T junction rather than just an elbow. Um, and you could just let off a ball valve there and it would let the pressure back in. Um, I just went with an elbow because this part here really isn't that uh, difficult to simply open up. Oop, got to undo the ball valve. And then I just pull it to the side slightly and it reduces, it loses all the pressure. So that's just an easy way for me to get rid of the pressure out of this thing. So that really is it. Super basic, a chamber, an insert for your cactus juice, one lid for the vacuum, one lid for the pressure. This thing takes up no space in my shop, really, compared to large pots and all sorts of things. I think this is a really good solution for me. This is the only thing I just couldn't get past. Um, you have to get a proper uh, pump, vacuum pump. Um, and even though this really is not uh, high-end at all, it wasn't too bad. So I've, I'll put a link down in, this, in the description. So that's my setup uh, for the vacuum and the pressure pot. Um, really simple. It absolutely works. If space is a problem for you um, or budget, these things do start. If you're getting professional ones, the pressure pot, $250. The vacuum chamber, $250. Then you need the pumps over and above that. So it can get very expensive. Uh, I think I put this whole thing together for maybe $70, $80. So um, really affordable, great way to start. Uh, stabilizing your wood, casting resin so that you don't have any bubbles in it. And so now I can start creating scales uh, for the various knives that I'm making. Um, still got a couple of other projects to go. I need to fix my grinder, I think I've said in the past. That's my next project so that I can then get back onto making the knives. Thanks. Please like, subscribe and comment and uh, see you in the next one.